The whole Qur'an is special and every part of it is going to have something to benefit you. But is it okay to have a favorite surah or to recite something repeatedly or listen to it because it resonates with you in a certain way, maybe because of where you're at in life at the moment? Absolutely. The Prophet ﷺ himself was most moved by the verses that reminded him of his responsibility. The verse in Surah An-Nisa, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا How will it be when we bring forth a witness upon every nation and we bring you, O Muhammad ﷺ, as a witness upon them? He wept profusely ﷺ and he couldn't even handle any more of its recitation or the time he spent the entire night reciting just one ayah and crying. In تُعَذِّبْهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ عِبَادُكْ وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ If you punish them, O oh Allah, they are your slaves. But if you forgive them, verily you alone are the Almighty and the All-Wise. And he was asked وسلم, about a man who used to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas at the end of his recitation in every single prayer. And when he asked the companions to ask the man why he recites Qul Hu Allah Ahad so frequently, the man responded, he said, because it's Sifatul Rahman, because it's a description of the most merciful. And I love to read the description of the most merciful. So the Prophet said, go back and tell that man that Allah loves him because of his love for that surah. A person who is in distress may find something extremely beautiful about Surah Yusuf. Ar-Rahman and Surah Yasin are dear to so many people. You also have Surah Maryam, which so many people will say is their favorite surah of the Quran. With Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he used to say, إِذَا وَقَعْتُ فِي آلِ حَمِيم وَقَعْتُ فِي رَوْضَ أَتَأَنَّقُ فِيهِنَّ When I come across the family of Hamim, it's like walking into this beautiful, blissful garden, and I just want to stroll in it. In one narration, he said, Alu Hamim dibaj al Quran, that the family of Hamim is like the silk covering of the Quran. And Alu Hamim are seven surahs that all begin with Hamim in the Quran. It starts from Ghafir and it goes to Surah Al Ahqaf. And they were all revealed in one sequence in Mecca. And one of the unique features of this set of surahs is that there are no fiqhi rulings in them. There are no legal judgments or technicalities. It's just all reminders of Allah and the hereafter. So even with the companions, different parts of the Qur'an are naturally going to soften your heart in certain ways. And the softer your heart is and more attached it is to any part of the Qur'an, the more likely you are to succeed in the hereafter. So let's get back to the concept of intercession. On the Day of Judgment, the Qur'an as a whole is an intercessor and it beautifies its companion, and everyone that was even involved in their Qur'an journey. Now there's one narration with some weakness in it, but the scholars quote and say, we hope in its reward, and that is that the Prophet ﷺ was reported to have said, whoever recites the Qur'an and memorizes it, and abides by what is halal in it, what is lawful in it as lawful, and abstains from what it deems haram, what it deems unlawful, Allah will admit him into paradise due to it, and grant him shafa'a, grant him intercession for 10 of his family members. So here you have the reward of the Qur'an in its recitation and its application. And that's important because the Qur'an is not just to be memorized, but it's also to be applied. And the more that a person does both, the more honor they're going to find from it on the day of judgment for themselves and for their parents or anyone else who taught them the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man qara al Qur'an." Whoever recites the Qur'an and acts in accordance with what is in it, his parents will be crowned on the day of resurrection with a light that is brighter than the light of the sun in your worldly homes. Then we start to find the Prophet ﷺ talking about how particular surahs benefit you in the station. Okay, so he said, recite the Qur'an for on the day of resurrection it will come as an intercessor for its reciters. Then he said, Iqra'u al-Zahrawayni al-Baqara wa Surat Ali Imran. Recite the two brightly illuminated chapters, Surat al-Baqara and Ali Imran. And he said, فَإِنَّهُمَا تَأْتِيَانِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كَأَنَّهُمَا غَمَامَتَانِ أَوْ غَيَايَتَانِ أَوْ فِرْقَانِ مِنْ طَيْرِ 
He said, for on the day of resurrection, they will come as if they were two clouds or two shades or two flocks of birds. To hajani an ashabihima. And they will be arguing on behalf of their companions. The scholar said, you know, think of when Sulaiman alayhi salam used to walk in this world with his kingdom and how everyone used to admire how it was all at his disposal. Now imagine a person walking on the day of judgment and Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran are like two canopies, two flocks of birds, two clouds that are following you and that everyone is admiring and wishing they had done so as well, wishing they had committed those surahs to their memory and acted upon them as well. And that's why the Prophet said, اِقْرَأُوا سُورَةِ الْبَقَرَةِ فَإِنَّ أَخْذَهَا بَرَكَةً وَتَرْكُهَا حَسْرَةً وَلَا تَسْتَطِيعُهَا الْبَطَلَةً He said وسلم, recite Surah Al-Baqarah. For doing so produces blessing in this life and abandoning it produces regret in the next life. And وَلَا تَسْتَطِيعُهَا الْبَطَلَةً can mean that the lazy are unable to recite it or that sorcerers are unable to penetrate it. The Prophet also mentioned some of these other short portions that we recite on a daily basis. He once heard a man reciting Qul huwa Allah ahad, Surah Al-Ikhlas. And the Prophet responded and he said, Wajabat, Wajabat, Wajabat. It has become mandatory. And they asked the Prophet what he was speaking about. He said, Jannah has become mandatory for that person by their recitation of Qul huwa Allah ahad. Something so simple, but paradise is mandatory for the one who knows and who commits to Surah Al-Ikhlas, Qul huwa Allah ahad. In another authentic hadith, the Prophet said, whoever recites Ayatul Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illahu, after every one of the prescribed prayers, the Prophet said, لَمْ يَمْنَعْهُ مِنْ دُخُولِ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا أَنْ يموت. Nothing is standing between him and his entrance into paradise except for death. Meaning it is guaranteed for him at that point that he's going to enter into Jannah. So we've covered Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, and then Al-Ikhlas and Ayat Al-Kursi. Now there is one more companion, and this is what the scholars say is the persistent intercessor. And it is known as the Surah that is Al-Mani'ah, the preventer. And it's also Al-Munjiyah, the rescuer. And that is Surah Al-Mulk. The Surah that the Prophet Sallallahu said, that the one who recites it every night will be protected from the punishment of the grave. And some of the scholars said it prevents one from doing the deeds that warrant the punishment of the grave. And its virtue and its recitation itself prevents the punishment of the grave. It is such a beautiful and powerful surah. So much so that the Prophet ﷺ said in another narration, Suratun min al-Qur'an, thalathuna aya, tashva'u li sahibiha. That there are 30 verses, one surah in the Qur'an, that will show up on the Day of Judgment. 30 verses and will intercede on behalf of its companion. One narration he said, خَاصَمَتْ لِصَاحِبِهَا It will continue to argue on behalf of its companion حَتَّى يُخْفَرَ لَهُ Until that person is certainly forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu said that that is تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ Surah Al-Mulk with its 30 verses showing up on the Day of Judgment, arguing on your behalf, saying, Ya Allah, forgive him. Ya Allah, protect him from the punishment. Ya Allah, enter this person into Jannah. And SubhanAllah, in that surah, what do you find? It's full of the remembrance of death in the hereafter. Inna ladina yakhshawna rabbahum bil ghayb. Lahum maghfiratun wa ajrun kabir. Surely for those who have awe of their Lord without seeing him, there's forgiveness and a mighty reward. And so this Quran, as much as it is shifa, it's a healing in this life, it's so much more for you in the next. And from the moment you enter your grave to the moment of your entrance into paradise, all it keeps on bringing is elevation. And that too is true of the life that we live in now.